Today, Angie and I are going to share our five top tips. And guess what? Sometimes I say five and I only have four fingers there. Five top tips that we think are essential to becoming a photographer. Because to be honest, and Angie and I have a lot of debates about this, are you born a photographer or can you become a photographer? I think you can become a photographer. Look at other people's work. Look at pictures in magazines. Look at photographs of cookery, of sport, of lifestyle, and see what it is you like about the angles that the photographer has chosen. But anyway, tip number one, light. Because really, great photography normally means wonderful light. Now, right now, Angie's got me out here in the garden because this is the last 10 minutes of light and it's really nice light. Even a haggard old bloke like me can look actually quite okay in this kind of light. So first 10 minutes as the sun comes up in the morning, last 10 minutes in the evening, that is part of what we call the golden hour. And that's when we like to get the light coming from the side. You don't want the light coming straight onto your subject. That's front light and it's very flat. You don't see the wrinkles. If you're taking an elephant, you want to see the textures, the modeling of the animal shape. And to do that, you want to be slightly off having the sun over your shoulder. Side light, or at times even backlight, can be sensational. So understanding light. Walk around a tree at different times in the day and see the way the light plays out, or on a flower. Get used to the effects of light that you like, and I can promise you, backlight, side light, is the moody atmospheric light. When you're reviewing your pictures and you see those shots, you'll say, that's it. So great light, understand light. Secondly, what is your position gonna be? Do you want to be low down to your subject? Well, often we do. Because even an elephant, even something as big as an elephant or a buffalo, if you're down low, and I don't mean on the ground, out of your car, you don't wanna get trampled, but if you can get low down in your vehicle or put a remote camera out carefully without disturbing your subject to get low down, you will make the animal look big and powerful and dominate. You don't want to be looking down on an elephant or buffalo if you're trying to make it look as imposing as they are. But sometimes the high angle, the high position is better. The view from a hot air balloon the view of lions flanked around a kill. Whereas if I'm looking at them from this point, I can just see a load of lions all stacked up, can't really get depth of field, depth of focus. And so then by raising my angle, standing up out of the roof hatch, which I normally wouldn't want to do, I prefer the low angle, but where those lions are flanked around a kill or feeding, then looking down on them will give you the shot. So thinking, so first of all, we got light, Secondly, what's your position going to be? Low or looking down? And then third, what about your composition? Well, one of the simplest things, and you hear people talk about this a lot, is don't split your frame into two equal halves. You don't want your horizon running through the middle of your frame. So it's half sky, half foreground. Think about it. Look at the shot that you want to capture. If it's a magnificent sky with big puffy clouds in it, then make two thirds of your picture the sky and just a sliver of the grass in the foreground. Maybe you've got a shot which is gonna be perfection. Two thirds sky and then elephants walking along the bottom third of your picture, just giving you that dynamic. So rule of thirds, basically don't have the horizon running through the middle of the picture. And then the rule of her thirds, it works a little bit like a noughts and crosses. So thirds this way and thirds that way. And that would mean that you would offset your subject. You don't want your subject smack in the middle of the picture. It's just so boring. Here's your shot. Here's the person smack in the middle. And in fact, I tell you what, and you will move the camera so as I'm not smack in the middle of the picture so that I'm off just slightly to one side so as I'm maybe looking out into space, so as it gives it a more dynamic look to it. So again, rule of thirds, is it the sky or the foreground that I want to make more of? 
And do I want my subject off to left or right? Do I want it looking into space, looking out of the picture to give it some dynamic? So light, angle of view, composition. Now, the last two things. What about the speed of the setting? If you want to capture action, then generally, if you want your subject to be sharp, let's say it's a cheetah chasing an impala or a Thompson's gazelle, flying like the wind, fastest thing on four legs on earth, 60 to 70 miles an hour. Now, if you shoot at a fast speed, let's say a thousandth of a second, the shutter opens and closes, boom, just like that. Your cheetah will be nice and sharp. But if you want to get a blurred, a, a more sort of atmospheric look, and I love to do this and Angie goes mad because so many times I don't get it right. But if I follow the cheetah and I pan, so now I've got my camera, I've got my lens, I'm following the movement of my subject across the frame. I'm keeping it so as it's got space to run into, so as it's not right in the middle of the frame. And now I might take it at a 60th of a second. I could go down to a 30th of a second or a 15th, and that's when Angie gets fed up with me because it's very tricky to get partial sharpness and partial blur. But what I want is the cheetah's body, the head, of course, as the cheetah's moving, is pretty much motionless. The legs are going 10 to the dozen. So a 60th of a second, follow the motion, get my focus point onto the head, sharp head, blurred legs, now I've got a shot that says motion. So using your speed to create a sense of motion, that's point number five. And so the final thing is, what I've already been talking about earlier today, but maybe weren't listening then, and that's about visualizing the picture you want to take. As Angie always says, what are you gonna say? There's no point, not for us anymore, of just going out there and taking pretty pictures. We want to have a picture which has got a message, a powerful message about our planet, about the Sacred Nature Initiative, about how important our natural world is and how by taking pictures which move you, the audience, to think more carefully about our relationship to the wonderful world of wildlife, those incredible landscapes, that's the message we want to convey. And so often, we will go out with an assignment, as Chris Packham, a great friend of ours, wonderful photographer, great TV presenter says, before you go on the holiday of a lifetime, look and see what other people did when they went to Antarctica, when they went on safari. What kind of pictures did they take? Portraits of lions, of cheetahs, pictures of penguins? And then promise yourself, amongst the bag of pictures you'll come back with, the portfolio, of some beautiful images, maybe not groundbreaking, that there will be five shots, might even be two, might be one, where you can really say to yourself, that's it. And you surprise the viewer. You get the viewer when you turn the page of the magazine or the book and you come into that picture and you look at it and you say, oh my goodness, that's amazing. I haven't seen something like that before. And it could be because of the way you've used your settings, perhaps creating this beautifully moving, dynamic image. But it might be the lens that you chose, maybe a wide angle lens of a beautiful fig tree or of penguins on ice. So it looks like they're at the end of the world. You've got lots of tricks in your book. And the big thing is to use them to create images that say something and that don't look like everybody else's. So check out Angie's images because she really knows a thing or two about pushing the limits. Me, I used to just go out there and take pictures of animal behavior. That was my background. Angie saw the opportunity to be creative. That's the skill of the photographer, to translate what they see, he or she, and create something dynamic and wonderful that moves you and makes you think, I want to go there. I want to see that for myself. I want to experience that. Five tips. Light, angle, low angle, high angle. Composition, rule of thirds, thinking about what's in your picture. Creative use 
of your shutter speed to create blurred images, part sharp, part blur to create motion, or every feather, every element of the, the bird in flight, pin sharp. And then finally, visualization. Thinking before you go out there, what am I going to do? What am I going to try and capture? That is the art of photography. Five top tips. I wish somebody had told me that 40 years ago. Well, and she did 30 years ago. And my photography's improved.